49ers mailbag coming at you on the 49ers report. But before I answer some of your questions, really excited to tell you about the HiHo app. It is a Q&A app which will allow you to get your faces and your questions featured on the 49ers report. I'll tell you about that more coming up. Another question coming in from Scion. Should the Niners be concerned about all of the Fields and Jones hype out of Chicago and New England? The Justin Fields hype out of Chicago is real. The Mac Jones hype out of New England is not real. It was as early as last week when people were saying, I don't know, Mac Jones doesn't possess some of the physical qualities and the strong arm that some of these other quarterback prospects do. Why, would sh why should we be concerned about Justin Fields as well as Mac Jones when the word out of Santa Clara is that Trey Lance has been having a really, really good OTA and rookie minicamp. So all my focus is in on Trey Lance, and I think he has just as much physical ability as Justin Fields. I think Trey Lance is in a better position to succeed because Kyle Shanahan over Matt Nagy. Mac Jones, he of course has Bill Belichick, but in terms of physical attributes and skill, Trey Lance is so much more gifted than a guy like Mac Jones. Now, Jones more experienced, but Lance, he can rip it, and his physical qualities are certainly tantalizing. Wet Noodle 187 chiming in. Thanks for watching the 49ers report, as you always do every single week. Do you think Armstead can bounce back? For sure. Uh, you know, Eric Armstead, he's a really good defensive lineman, and I think the big key for the 49ers defensive front this year, just getting everybody back healthy. And if Nick Bosa is demanding as much attention as he should be on the outside, and that all comes down to health as he's coming off that torn ACL, I think it's going to open up a lot of opportunities for Eric Armstead. Because think about this. You're an opposing offensive coordinator, right? You're devising a game plan, and you're going up against edge rushers that include Nick Bosa, Eric Armstead, Samson Ebucom, some of the other guys on this roster. The list goes on and on and on. They're pretty stacked at that position. The main focus is going to be on Nick Bosa. That's where your attention goes to. So you're going to use two offensive linemen against him. You're going to use the tight end to chip him and knock him off his spot. What does that do for Eric Armstead? Frees up some opportunities for him to pin his ears back and get after the quarterback. So I do think he'll bounce back from a mediocre and subpar 2020 season. David Vilma, you're the man. Can we drop a tight end and keep Jamichael Hasty? I'm not convinced that Mike Cole Pruitt, who the 49ers signed last week, is going to make this roster. I'm interested in what has you so intrigued about Jamichael Hasty. This is a 49ers team that can honestly go, like, realistically five, six guys deep on this current roster in the backfield because there's so much talent on the roster. Unfortunately for Jamichael Hasty, he's right now factoring in fifth on the depth chart. But with Raheem Mostert and Jeff Wilson going down, there's a great opportunity for Hasty, as well as some of the younger guys like Elijah Mitchell and Trey Sermon to really prove themselves. Over under 10 and a half wins for the 49ers in 2021. Back a couple weeks ago, I did a scheduled prediction for the Niners. I'm hitting the over. 10 and a half has been set by the odds makers in Vegas. I went with 11 wins for the 49ers. Remember, it's going to be a 17-game, 18-week schedule. Type O for 10.5 wins. Type U for under. Predict it for me and let me know if you think the 49ers are going to have another star-studded campaign. Let's get to this question from Bo Terry. Who will replace Justin School and Tavarius Moore? So Jalen Moore, the fifth-round pick out of Western Michigan in the college ranks, played tackle. But the 49ers envision him being a guard. But with Justin School going down, it now opens the door for Jalen Moore to get tackle reps as well as guard reps. And when you get a guy in the fifth round who can serve a variety of roles and be versatile and kind of take over positions of importance on the interior as well as the outside, that bodes really, really well for Jalen Moore. Also look at guys like Sean Coleman, as well as Colton McKivitz, as far as Tavarius, um, man, Marcel Harris, Talanoa Hufanga, um, those guys are, are, are going to be guys who are going to be competing for those backup safety spots as well. So, yeah, keep an eye on, on some of those names. Meatsy Boy, how good do you think we will do, and do you think we will win the division, or what do you have us placing? NFC West, I think realistically it could be one of the best divisions across the entire National Football League. So it's going to be an uber-competitive division. 
The Seahawks, what, they win 12 games last year. Rams won 10. The Cardinals were vying for a playoff spot going into Week 17. If the 49ers can stay healthy, it's them and the Rams as the front runners, according to Vegas, in terms of winning the NFC West. I think they can win 11 games. I think they can win the NFC West. And I realistically think they can make a run at a Super Bowl. But Meatsy Boy, it is all going to come down to health for this team. And already the injury bug is already starting to haunt the 49ers during OTAs. Let me tell you about the HiHo app. What it is, basically a video Q&A app. And we want to use HiHo to get your faces, your voices, your noises, your questions featured on a future show here on the 49ers Report. So go to chatsports.com slash 49ers HiHo. Download the HiHo app right now. Unfortunately, as of now, it is only available on iPhones. So that link at the bottom of your screen, once you plug it in in your web browser, will redirect you to the App Store. But once you get there, and once you set up an account and download the HiHo app, search at 49ers. I have posted a video on our 49ers account with the picture that you're looking at right now. That video will play, and once you have your account set up, all you have to do, there will be a reply button on the screen of that video on your screen right now, and just reply with a 49ers question. And I will be able to answer those questions on a future 49ers report. As we continue to grow the 49ers faithful family, as well as our channel, as we get closer and closer to 36,000 subscribers, we want to continue to innovate and do things differently, the HiHo app one of those things that we're trying to do here. So once you download it, give us a follow on the app at 49ers. Reply to my video posing the question for you all to answer it with your 49ers questions. And you will be able to be on the show just like I am right now. So once again, that's chatsports.com slash 49ers hi-ho. That link is in the description of this video right now. It redirects you to the app store. You'll be able to download it and leave your questions to get answered by yours truly. Let's move ahead in this mailbag with this question from Justin Abelera. I think I'm saying that right. Hopefully I am. If not, I apologize. You think the Niners trade midseason? Who would you trade for big compensation? We have seen a shift in how general managers approach midseason trades. And I think a lot of NFL general managers have found that there is a lot of value in making midseason roster upgrades through the trade market because they've seen how that works across the NBA. If you remember, as early as like five years ago, NFL general managers hardly, if ever, made deals mid-season. But I think more and more as we kind of look ahead and as the NFL game evolves and changes and as analytics are involved more in the game as well, you will continue to see general managers become more and more aggressive and maybe these mid-season trades happen more often. So... Are they going to do it? Who knows? Uh, if guys start going down or if they need a clear roster upgrade, maybe. Move ahead with this question from Hanif Razak. What are the chances that the 49ers trade Jimmy G on the trade deadline this year rather than next offseason? It could happen. And there could be a couple of things that play into that. If Jimmy G starts the season off and let's say over the first six weeks he has 20 touchdowns and one pick. But Trey Lance during training camp as well as the preseason, blows the doors off of the competition and really just impresses this 49ers coaching staff. And Kyle Shanahan just believes that Trey Lance is ready to play. Maybe they'll trade Jimmy Garoppolo to a quarterback needy team. I would say that it probably doesn't happen. If I had to put a bet down, I think Jimmy G starts this entire season. The 49ers take the approach of what the Chiefs did with Patrick Mahomes and Alex Smith. When Mahomes was ready, he played. But he wasn't ready that first year. So they sat him and didn't risk ruining and damaging his confidence. I think that's the play here for the 49ers and Lance. And I think it's the best position to be in. Here on the 49ers Report, we do a bunch of fun and interactive things. I don't think anybody is doing what we're doing here at Chat Sports. And why is that? I mean, we're doing two live Q&A mailbags here on the 49ers Report. And nobody else is really doing that. So make sure you are subscribed to the 49ers Report by Chat Sports. A couple ways you can do that. Either hit that red subscribe button down below or go to youtube.com slash 49ers TV. We're pushing out the latest news and rumors, daily videos on your 49ers. So smash that subscribe button and help get us to 36,000 subscribers super duper jones you're making me feel super duper with this question right here hey chase how has trey lance been doing at otas so producer sam brown i think we actually have a quote in the database from mike mcdaniel 
in which he was kind of complimenting the work that Trey Lance has done throughout OTAs as well as rookie minicamp. So he'll cook that up here in just a second and bring it up on your screen. Trey Lance has been impressing a lot of people uh, within the 49ers organization. And there are a couple reasons for that. One, just being simply his mentality. This is what offensive coordinator Mike McDaniel had to say about Trey Lance so far. The guy is very smart, and he wants to do well, but he takes coaching. That's something that's undervalued in this day and age. I think that people don't really give its true gravity. Hey, a guy is willing to hear constructive criticism and take that and move forward instead of getting their feelings hurt because we're not in the business of feelings. We're in the business of end results. Mike McDaniel, thank you so much for saying this. I mean, he basically just took out an arrow, and to all the cancel culture people and softies, he put an arrow right in between your eyes. I mean, what a great quote, just going after all of the soft, the softies out there. And for a rookie quarterback who's taking constructive criticism and taking coaching, that is a great sign. So if Mike McDaniel and Kyle Shanahan are impressed by Trey Lance, that goes to show you he's doing some good things so far. Let's get to this question from Jason Arellano. If Ford isn't available, who should we sign? Are you talking about D Ford? Okay, well, I mean, oh, if he's not on the roster, if, if, hopefully that's what you're saying. So Jason, yeah, if D Ford is not on the roster, just trying to comprehend what you're trying to say, who should we sign? Uh, if you're just joining us, um, this is part of our live show. I did push out five moves that I would make post Julio Jones that I think the 49ers could make. One of those guys, Justin Houston. I think Justin Houston, even though he's 32 years old, he's coming off an eight sack season last year, could be a viable and totally doable replacement for D Ford if he's not healthy. Now, Kyle Shanahan has said he expects D to be ready for training camp. If he's not though, guys like Justin Houston are on the open market. Melvin Ingram has still yet to sign with the team. And these are guys who in the past have come forward with a lot of production. And in this case with Justin Houston, Eight sacks last year with the Indianapolis Colts. For a team that won, what, 11 games and almost beat the Buffalo Bills in the first round of the NFL playoffs, I'm going all in on Justin Houston, even if not D. Ford is, you know, on the field and ready. Joshua Nunez, who do you have being the second-year breakout player for the Niners? Javon Kinlaw. I think Javon Kinlaw is going to go off this year. There was a knee injury that lingered and festered a little bit last year. But even with that knee injury... He was able to, in spots, display a lot of brilliance. I mean, that touchdown return against the Los Angeles Rams, what an athletic, freaky play that he was able to pull off and take the ball to the crib. You look at his numbers in 2020, especially for a guy who was drafted in the middle of the first round out of South Carolina, the numbers were just okay from a raw number standpoint. 33 tackles, one and a half sacks, four tackles for loss, zero forced fumbles, no fumbles for, uh, no fumble recoveries, excuse me. But going into year two, as he cleaned up that knee issue, more acclimated with the NFL game, I think he's going to be a breakout guy. D'Amico Ryans agrees with me as well. Doge Power 49er, Doge, right to the moon. We got a lot of Doge guys in the chat sports office. Is Mostert done for the season or can he play? Yeah, he's not done for the season. Kyle Shanahan said last week uh, he is going to be back for training camp. So no worries there. Raheem Mostert, not done for the season. All good on that front. 